is my first ever vlog, which I never intended to do. And I just never thought of it, but like, just for fun, why not? And you experience. So, subscribe, 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 like, 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 and comment. Bye! Hi! Just don't mind my face though, I hadn't showered at that time because I just arrived in Toraja after more than 24 hours trip by bus and I have I hadn't even sleep so yeah, I look like a wet. <laughs> hmm, this vlog is most certainly is gonna challenge my English and my ability of storytelling which I suck at that. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, this place is called Lemo. It's a stone cliff grave of Lemo people call, and it's in Makali Toraja. These graves look like a cluster of squares on a large flat stone wall, as you guys can see on the video. This square is actually large enough to fit an entire family whose bodies are placed in rows and layers, and extended families can also share the plot. If you can see, the openings of these chambers are either closed by a wooden door which indicates that there is still space for bodies to be buried inside and there are chambers sealed by concrete which means a whole family has been buried inside anyway this burial can cost up to 100 million rupiah or around seven thousand dollars and it takes between five months to two years to build the reason why for this lengthy duration is because they still use quote-unquote traditional tools in the carving of the burial plots such as bamboo, chisel, and hammer. Also, most grave makers have day jobs as carpenters and farmers and only carve in their free time. If a family requests a new stone grave, they must inform the grave makers in advance considering how long it might take to finish it. So, mm-hmm. So for reference, the minimum wage for monthly salary here is around two hundred to three hundred dollars. So seven grand is absolutely a lot of money. Sometimes you would see a person who has died, their family will put it in, in a coffin and they will keep it in the house until they have enough money and able to gather the family member from outside Toraja to hold the ceremony to be able to bury the dead person. Sometimes it takes months, even years. I personally have seen one who hadn't been buried for more than 10 years because of that reason. I also have a relative who just passed away a few months ago and plan to be buried next year after they will be able to do a ceremony. There's a saying that Rajan will live to die and it is because they really value this funeral ceremony, but yeah, it is just mad expensive. By the way, did you guys see the buckets in the photo earlier? Seems like someone just recently buried here. I hear people say that this place is often revert of the home of the spirit, but I didn't feel any type of eerie feeling. I don't know, maybe because it was during morning time when I visited here. And one thing for sure, people here say do not go to grave when it's nearly evening, as grave will change into pasak bamboo during evening, which means the markets of dead spirits. So yeah. I don't know why, but I like the tom tom noise made by the shoe steps. It's so satisfying, don't you think? <laughs> this part was actually kind of funny, but also made me feel really bad. I was being a nosy, curious person as usual. 
And I saw a house with a driving bull's horn, and I wanted to see it up close. But the ladder to go up was just from a one small bamboo. I knew how to climb it up, but I didn't know how to go down. <laughs> so they had to ask their neighbor for proper ladder. I felt so bad, but they were really nice. <laughs> These people were actually complete strangers, by the way. I was just wandering around and I saw them drawing these bullhorns and I wanted to check them out. So they let me went up and they even tried to find me the ladder so I can go down and even held it for me. That's super nice. I go... Well, there was not much to see in Lemo as it was only stone cliff grave but it was definitely worth it to see it in person so if you guys ever visit Raja definitely check it out um yeah and these are some you know shop places where you can buy souvenirs and hand gift to friends and family um i would say that the price is it's the same with the other place because a lot of people say that don't buy souvenirs in tourist spot because it's actually pretty expensive. I'm telling you, this place is not expensive. Um, as long as you know how to bargain, that's for sure. Because but that's basically every tourist spot. So yeah, check them out. And this one is tattoo maker. This tattoo isn't only for art purpose, by the way. It really has a deeper purpose than just an art. This tattoo is called Tao Tao, which is supposed to be guardian tattoo, and it is made similar to the face of the dead person, and it is placed around their grave. You guys actually saw them before on the stone cliff grave earlier. This tattoo is considered as a protector as well as a medium to continue to establish a relationship between the living and the dead, and for that purpose, this tattoo needs to get through a lot of ritual in the making. A ritual even needs to be held for cutting down trees to make that into wood for statue. Well, this guy does it for art purpose only and sell it. So you guys can buy it as a softener. The smaller one starts from 150,000 rupiah or around 10 bucks. And bigger one can be up to 2 million or around 150 US dollar. So you should be another person, and then you take a couple <laughs> for Nicola and uh, mm -hmm. Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> and then you tell to people in America, so we are another, we have yeah, a statue. Like a... Yeah. I'll put his number on the screen if I know how to do that though. Maybe there's someone who is interested to buy all of these things. Cause please, Torajan's art's cool. <laughs> And finally, this is me going to my grandparents' house, which is two hours away from the city. Because my grandparents' house is very villagey. And basically, you see this type of view most of the time on the way there. And voila! You see all of these aesthetic tribal looks? Yep, my grandparents' house. Here it is.
kwayo na la nalo sono kwa 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 tai pada lu mu balu mu masuti ri So the main event for this trip was actually my cousin's wedding and all of these things were all the preparations for that as you guys can see in Toraja um, helping each other and solidarity are still highly valued so these were all neighbors came to help with all of the preparations needed like from the cooking performance decorations any type of preparations they came and helped it was such a joyful moment and it's like super grateful realizing that even nowadays people still help each other even though it's kind of rare but in Toraja it's basically every day every time you will see this I wish I could show you guys all the process of these preparations but I was just so tired at that moment I just arrived and I had to wake up early morning the next day I'm so in love with that white hoodie and black hat vibes dance. It's super funny, it's super fun. Oh my god. Uh, funny story about this part my cousin provided night karaoke and loud music as quote unquote entertainment for these people after helping us with all the preparations. But then a neighbor came to stop this because it was late night, it was like 12 a.m. But they were just basically just warming up to dance around and then um, jamming, but they had to stop. They got forced to stop, so yeah. Well, the neighbor was okay with karaoke, but he was not okay with loud music, all of this like party music. It was again, it was too loud and it was late night. But these people are just so busy and they just decided to just went back home feeling so busy. <laughs> And my first dinner on this trip with my family in Toraja, basically wrap up day one. Good morning day two, the wedding day. Sounds like even pigs and birds were excited too. Dang. And here's the sneak peek of the main characters today. This is my cousins getting ready for her wedding at 3 a.m. Dang! Look at you! Pretty! Thank you. 
Here's the groom with his family came to pick up the bride to go together to church for the wedding blessing whilst the people on the side are the family from the bride's side basically welcoming the groom and his family and they will all together go to church this is like a typical thing in Indonesia where wedding always starts with the groom came picking up the brides but this is like a Trojan style and Christian style I hope you know what I'm saying it's hard I am terrible at explaining. Just watch it. Tanglama <laughs> La me kuta na rondan la kobatang di kaleta la meong music din tiang kala di otondon to batang ta. Do not ask me what he was saying. I don't know. I have no clue at all, actually. It's like an advanced Trojan language, and I am ashamed to admit that I don't know much of Trojan language. I'm a bad Trojan. I know. <laughs> This part, I'm not exactly sure if this is a common thing to do at wedding procession in Indonesia as we have various cultures and religions so there are many ways of doing weddings but one thing for sure 
at least for all the wedding blessings at church I've ever attended, I have almost, if not, always seen this procession. So basically, the bride and the groom go together to each other's parents and kneel down, expressing gratitude for raising them and now letting them marry their partner that they're gonna start their own new life, new family, I mean. So yeah, kneel down is a form of humbling yourself to your parents, whilst kissing their hand is a form of showing your respect and gratitude, and kissing cheeks are just showing closeness of the relationship. Mr. Ray and Mrs. Ludi are officially spouses. Congratulations! Now let's roll. Tulak kita kayu bapak kisarekanan kairin kilau silaban nang ada rampanan pekapak laut bilik pantasi sangka pak Sulianna. Faden ni mana ada rampanan kapak sangka pak Sulianna loki salah siran doki dilain tapa salau membayar kami puang matu datang anak lagi puang sampak batu loli kan doa suang kana pepoanganan. Buang matua ambek, buang matua anak-anak, buang pena masal lo. Pora akan way samping dan pipit kantan atak san gori-gori. Deno upak kipu upak paraya kipu paraya kita untuk masak ke mayir mana dinding. Mas Solanas. Ada rampanan kapak sangka pak Sulian nallo ma induk bakar di surah ma ambek di top tiang kilo. Kure sumangak na padang kalua sabak perayaan na lipu tumbo pulau. Kure sumangana padang riba tualu sabah parayana Inde itu tirandu kulikulam bena tasik tika luluna Lili na tampu malepo Na saladan lili lembang na padang riba setangana tandu lembang na tondok risang Allah Na luaya katikuran dan na tandu lembang Di tanda balok di toding longko. Nak abi mama karoin atau mak rara atau mak buku mak lo tu temu lantik kulak di rande lulangan. Nalambi re di natasi kumbok toko na bura bura. Nalambi sampai na bulan tu tu manan baranin. And this is the wedding reception, and they change their um, costume with a Trojan's wedding costume. So this is all about Trojan's wedding now. And don't even come at me saying what this 
guy said because I have no clue I didn't know any words that he said but that's basically how you say it at the wedding like all the songs like hey something like that I cannot even copy that but yeah enjoy I don't know what to explain on this part just enjoy Actually, I kind of know. Maybe a little bit. It's kind of like showing gratitude and say it something like, oh, like Batualu, which is my grandparents' village where this wedding is. And it's like, we're in a joyful moment because um, there's a wedding. You know what? Maybe I don't know. Forget it. Nenem palolong niraram, palolong ibuku. Reinhard, tambing papa pa gantenan bulawan. Inde taruk bulawan na puang pali padang lama tongkonan tondok bangla padang ri simbuang. Koe, kamu Thomas Solat. Jadi ada mai budaya. Ia rupanya. Tarian ini anak-anak kita ini akan dipersiapkan kembali. Mewakili sekolah minggu seluruh tanah Toraja. Jadi alangkah bagusnya, alangkah baiknya kita mendukung bersama. Siu di kalau tak bersiaria. Tak di sana, satu puluh siar ke satu lima ke satu. Malah bi di puluh semua atau kali tak seratus satu. So there is an interesting story behind this dance. This is not the dance that's supposed to be performed at the wedding. The original dance, Pagello, is performed by girl dancers and there will be guys play kettle drums live and in the middle of the dance, the dancer will come on top of the drum and dance. The thing is, this dance only performed for such a happy, joyful moment like wedding, harvest season, party for new house for example and EDC. And you might wonder, well isn't this wedding anyway? Well yeah, but there was someone who just passed away around the area so in order to respect the family who were in the morning, they decided to not perform Pagello. Really, the level of respecting each other in Toraya is just above and beyond. For reference, you can look it up, um, try find Pagelu dance. <laughs> Good morning, it's day 3 and this is me with my family at one of my grandparents' paddy field and we were catching eels and fish that we're gonna grill today so yeah it's, it was super fun <laughs>
I mean, you can call me cringy and it might sound cliche, but dude, happiness can be fun and little things like that. Sometimes we just like overthink and we just keep chasing happiness when seriously it can be everything around around you and yeah it's a little bit irony it came from my mouth <laughs> but dude like at that moment i realized that really as long as we can be content and just stop chasing happiness instead of just like enjoying every moment you will be happy i mean it's easy to say that but it's hard to actually apply that in your life but anyway it was fun day and I was so happy. That's all that matters. Yeah? <laughs> Eh 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 These two little kids are my relatives, also my neighbors back in Toronto. <laughs> And do not come at me and say like, oh my god, like child labor or like child abuse. No, stop. Because they voluntarily did it. They found this fun. Um, they think this is as a game or like playing. You know, this is a very typical thing to do. They, I mean, like in Toronto, there are not much of games or TV or gadgets. So being outside. Just kind of like uh, old days before when, you know, playing outside are fun and not just like staring at gadget. They're just not spoiled bro. They're like I am. <laughs> Well, after the wedding, my grandparents' house was just such a huge, huge mess. Ugh. So after we went catching fish, we all shared chores around the house. So there were people who were in charge on cooking. There were people who were in charge on cleaning the yard. And my part was cleaning inside the house. <laughs> It was so tiring, it was huge, it was so dirty, but yeah, it was fun, so, I complain. Anyway, this is where you get a million dollar view from my grandparents, um, what's it called again? Balcony. And this is gonna wrap up day 3 and also this video. If you guys like it, tell me I'll make part 2 if I'm not lazy. Bye!